Krishna, there's nothing. He can expand himself in as many Krishnas as he wants. He can. 16,000 girls, 16,000 Krishnas. Come on, girls, let's have some nice time in the palace. <laughs> Rasa dance, Krishna. There he is with each one of the gopis dance. And when they all become proud, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Krishna, the Lord of Lords, is just dancing with me. <laughs> and she opens her eyes and Krishna's gone. She sees, she sees the other gopi, same story. What happened? I was dancing with Krishna, all of a sudden he was gone. And then they can only cry, Krishna, where have you gone? Why you have left us? Are you here looking behind the trees, hugging the trees, falling on the ground? Krishna. Again, this is this is straight out of the Krishna book, you know. We want to read about these things from the pure devotee that Srila Prabhupada gave us all this excess. And it goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and they're searching for Krishna. Searching for Radha. Everything is actually meant in the greatest symphony of the symphony. You know what this is all about? This is the final stage of feminism. There is no higher stage of feminism. If you really think about it carefully, that Krishna himself wants to put the feet of Radharani on his head. <laughs> and everybody wants to become a maid servant of Radha to serve in her group. Doesn't matter whether they're kings, billionaires, this and that. They're, if they understand this philosophy, they want to give it up and become gopis. Like in this world, we always have this big trouble of the chauvinists, you know, and oh, women are put in second degree, oppressed, mistreated. Of course they are, because in the material world, it's all about wanting to be the macho. And if you want to be the macho, then, then you have to go and show that you're the macho. And then there's women, they say, hey, we can be macho as well, just wait and see. So then you have the macho women and the macho men, and they make a macho world, and it is all, it's a, it's a mesh, macho mess. Because all want to be machos. And the only true macho, not that I don't want to use that word, it's too ugly. The only, the only supreme Parama Purusha, uh, Adi Purusha, the original, is Lord Krishna. He is the unlimited power, the unlimited. He is the, 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 like I say, the, the superlative of anything you can imagine as far home, Lord, love, unconditional surrender. I mean, any. Use the most beautiful words of most beautiful words, like the, the super, super, super words of love. For Krishna, they're nothing but a little dust of the a fragrance which emanates from his body. He is, he is whatever you can think of in relationship to love. It is nothing but his you, his fragrance. What to speak the tingling sound of his ankle bell, which can devastate the entire creation in a second and turn it into ecstasy. That's why I say, even within the material world, my friend, <coughs> straight out of the material world, you can perceive you can perceive the unlimited manifesting. In this material world, I mean the microcosmos, mac macrocosmos, cosmology, 
And the more they find out, more Hubble telescopes and things like that, they send up in the sky and they go. It's like, it's the wow experience. It's wow. And then another picture. Wow. And then another one. Wow. And then send up another telescope. In the end, we are the we are the wah 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 world because we are observing things. And that's just the material world, my dear. That's what can be seen with eyes like yours and mine. So even the spectacular achievements or that you go in the macrocosmos or in the microcosmos, you have the same experience. The same wow experience. There's nothing you say, I understand it. You cannot understand anything. This is one of the silly things of the macho world. Macho world always says, I understand it. I control it. I manipulate it. Yes, I got the title for it. PhD, whatever. So like this, then, the much. Just, you know, I, I grab newspapers here and there. I don't have a regular, I don't read regular, but last one I did, I think they shoot up a new, new telescope. So, and they found a few new pictures and the headline was, Science Admitted that they had miscalculated the age of the universe by another 80 million years. <laughs> but now they know it exactly. I mean, on that information, first of all, you should spit. Then you should take the writer and throw him into jail. And the one who publishes this paper, he should go right with him into jail for declaring finite terminology on the infinite. It's a violence. It's an absolute violence to try to define the infinite. Because as soon as you define the infinite, or you try to define the infinite, you become very offensive. There's no way you can define, limit, concisely describe, package. The infinite. You cannot. There's no way. So if I is I give you an example. If I say the love of Sri Maharaj is worth hundred thousand dollars. That's a great insult. Hundred thousand dollars. That's peanuts. That's nothing. To say his love is worth hundred thousand dollars. It's an insult. And if I say his love is worth ten million dollars, it's still an insult. If I say his love is worth worth Thirty trillion thousand dollars, and people say, "No, that's not an insult anymore. You're glorifying him." <laughs> no, it's still an insult because you cannot give a price tag to love, because love is something higher than any sums of money. So the same thing when you want to say God's creation started so many millions of years ago. Now we know it for sure. You hold on a second, my dear. First of all, who told you that? Second of all, what is the proof? And third of all, why you announce it, it is true when it is not proven to be true. You're just a cheater. You just want to make people think that you're macho. And you're not. We're the world of failed machos. Like when they made this sentence, 
We were wrong, it's now 80 million uh, year, years more that the world was created. By making that statement, they are also saying anyone in the past who said anything different was just between ignorant or cheater. Because he said something <laughs> what it was not. So in one way, they themselves, by changing the speculation information, they're calling each other cheaters, speculators, and so on. But that's fashionable amongst them. They don't mind. Tomorrow they're going to speculate something new and put them down. This is the, this is the silly, silly, silly world. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Limiting the unlimited. This is very, very offensive, you know? And that's what the macho world is. It's a very offensive world. And therefore the macho is very offensive with his own wife. Can you imagine this? It is unimaginable to me, but you know it's... The man comes back home, <coughs> drunk or something, and he meets his wonderful wife who gave him three kids or something like that. And he goes, la, 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 la. and she says, husband, we need money. We need money. We have nothing in the refrigerator to eat. <laughs> what did you do with the money? Shut up, stupid woman. I cannot live like this. And anything she says, and then the guy goes and hits her. He starts beating on her. You shut up. You don't criticize me. Now, if this would be one in a million case, I may say, okay, why talk so much about one in a million if the other uh, 999,000 are all perfect, uh, are all quite acceptable. But this type of situation, is common. You can read about it in all the newspapers every day. And just because he he beat her, this macho idiot, it will not even come in a newspaper. In the United States, for domestic violence, they have an emergency number. And the government says we only have enough wealth. Uh, social welfare workers, that we can only attempt 10% of the emergency calls we are getting, my dear. That means they don't have people to send out to, to find out all these idiots. So now they made the laws very strict in America. Domestic violence. If any woman picks up the phone and says, my husband threatened to me. So they don't send the social worker anymore. They send the police car. <coughs> you threaten this woman? Come on. It's handcuffed, thrown in a police car, and they drive him to the police station. And then he has to pay fines, he has to do social work, and he's not allowed to come within a kilometer of his house for... Like for one call, he can mess, they can mess up the whole thing. And of course, that also creates a macho power for the women, no? Because now, with one phone call, they can hit the husband much harder than he with, her, with his fist. But this is our situation today. Macho world. Madness world. And everybody wants to show. I got the punch. <clears throat> I show you who's who. I will put you into your place. That is called male vanity. <clears throat> the 
male vanity competition. This is what this world is behind. After you, after you take all the, away all the layers of so, sophisticated lies, whitewashing and and uh, false beautification, like we have this Friedrichstadt Palace in Berlin, where every where every time there is some nice revue uh, and then they have like 30 girls or something dancing in their slippers uh, and throwing their legs into the public no? la 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 no? how you call it? Can, can. Cabaret. No. Uh, Cabaret, review, huh? and they got all these girls who are like, of course they are very beautiful girls, and then they dance half naked in front of some macho man, and they say, yes, I'm macho man, look all these girls are dancing for me, all I pay is 20 euros to see all those naked legs thrown at me. This is the Moulin Rouge. This is the, this is the tradition of the material with this, the nightclub. And the more you pay, the more degraded it gets. Then you got, then you got the, uh, the bars where uh, the tables are served by a beautiful woman showing their breasts. It's so degraded, it's so much. So what? Does any woman want to show her breast to any man? That is not natural. By the Vedic tradition, only the husband can see his wife naked. Nobody else. So for a woman to undress her breast and show it to everybody, well, she has to have a very strong feeling of something to do that. Maybe they pay her, pay her a lot of money for it, or so, no? And this is so far away from what is spiritual culture. Nightclub. The nightclubs, they really show what this world is all about. And this, how do you know a, a city is very uh, popular and renowned? By the nightlife. They call it the nightlife of a city. How much alcohol is consumed, how much cocaine is consumed, how many women are there selling themselves. No, no, no. This macho world, you know, it is a sick place. And you don't understand it. And if you don't stay out of it, then you will be very sad. The chastity of Krishna consciousness is so unique. The chastity of Krishna consciousness is the chastity of wanting to make Krishna the enjoyer of myself. And because that's applicable and valid for male and female, that's why the male followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they want to become females. In other words, from this point of view, those who are in a female body, they have a certain kind of advantage. So well, we don't have to give up our male body because we don't have it. So we have already female body. So Krishna, come, I'm ready to go with you. <laughs> Just come. Huh? So with for the man, uh oh, Krishna is a competitor. Ah. And why he plays?
place this flute so nice. Uh, and everybody loves him, and who loves me? Come on. Am I not am I not attractive enough? Why you don't want it? No? Why you want to all dance with Krishna? I don't play the flute, but I play the saxophone. Huh? <coughs> that's, that's what I call the, the madness of jazz. Huh? <laughs> it is the, the, the macho music. Here we want to say no rules and regulations. All everybody's inspiration to enjoy. If a real jazz musician becomes a real devotee, he surely can do also some jazz for Krishna. You can do anything for Krishna if it's really for Krishna. But jazz is not exactly known for producing devotional offerings. Huh? So, getting rid of the macho disease is not easy. It is, it is the real criteria of, I mean, the gopis, it's simple. They went into the forest and danced with Krishna. And everything was taken care of Krishna. But in Mahaprabhu's movement, you can join the night kirtan and Srivasanga. You can go and join the night kirtans at Sri Vasanga. That's where the real spiritual energy is flowing. And where are those night kirtans at Sri Vasanga? Basically, they are the followers of Lord Chaitanya propagating his message of love day and night. Preferably day, because at night it's different difficult to get an audience. I mean, not totally, I mean, there's so much nightlife out. I remember once I was in Amsterdam and I was in a Sankitan Marathon. And I think Mega Party, God brother of mine, and we were like, let's have it. Let's have the Sankitan competition. And I was into it, and he was into it. So when I came back to the temple at 8.30, which was really the limit, no? I heard it was Saturday, the end of the Sankta murder. I heard, Megapati is not back yet. I said, I gotta go out again. So at 8.30, after a whole day of Sankitan, I got my book bag ready and I went out again. At that time in Amsterdam at 8.30, you know, all the shops are closed. So where are the people? They're in the red light district, of which Amsterdam has quite a large one. So I wanted to do Sankitan at that time. I had to go to the red light district. So I went to the red light district and I started selling books and so on. And all of a sudden one British man came and he said, do you have a real good book about what you're practicing? And I had some Dutch books and so I didn't. He said, I want a book. So I had a Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila Volume 2. The first one which came out before the Chaitanya Charitamrita was actually printed. They made like a test volume, which later they, wasn't, they made it different. So I was just reading that, so I had it in my book bag. I said, well, this guy's asking for it. So I gave him the Chaitanya Charitamrita, a big book, and he looked at it. 
And then he put his fingers into his pocket and took out all the money he had, that was pounds, gulden, dollars, everything. He just packed all the money he had in my bag, in my hands, which I don't remember how much it was, at least like something like a hundred dollars. And I was like, <laughs> and as I was still looking at that money or something, he took the book and took off. So I looked around, and here was this man was going down the, the red light district with a check down the child, I'm holding it to his hand and dancing. Oh my God, I got it, I got it. I was like hallucinating. <laughs> where am I? They're in the light district or in heaven? Or where am I here? So I was deeply impressed by this occurrence. I did maybe till 10 o'clock a little bit more, 10, 11, I don't remember. When I got back to the temple, Megapati had come back, had seen that I had left again, he went out again. <laughs> <laughs> so then I said, all right, now I wait for him. So he came and I told him the story. We saw what happened. It was a real ecstatic feeling of preaching. So all one on one, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. This is see, this is a mystical part of touching people in some way or another, somewhere which you don't know. Nor do you know who you don't want to touch, nor do you know how you're gonna to touch it. It's all different department. Of course you should be equipped, you should have Munition for your arms, which means you should have Vedic wisdoms, okis, books of Prabhupada, CDs. You should be well equipped, you know. And Sankitan devotee, like, uh, in that sense, Paramatma is my, my, my favor, favorable example because Paramatma is really, he's, he's, he's such a caring person. He, in his bags, when he has Prashad, he has books, he has CDs, he has everything. He's really an example of Sankirtan consciousness. I, I designed it in South America, uh, La Canasta. Those, I wanted the devotees to go out with a whole array of spiritual goodies so that people could just be like, well, conquered by all the nectar of love the devotees produce, because the devotees produce nectar of love, my dear. They are not producing commercial goods. If it was for commercial goods, we would produce commercial stuff and become millionaires like all the companies who do all this. Com no, our products are all Govindas. They are all spiritual gifts of love. Like problem, matchless gift. Everything that the bodies do, they are matchless gifts. That is our movement, that is our whole attempt at everything. So, if you want to be part of Lord Chaitanya's movement, he's inviting you. And you can even be independent. And if you have no money, then go out more hours on Sankirtan. If you find, experience any financial crisis, then just be out there more hours and give out more books or gifts or prasadam or this or that and invite more people. What is the problem? For a devotee, the street and preaching person to person, it's the greatest nectar. Of course, nicer is to sit in front of a whole group of people and talk about Krishna. <coughs> That's nicer, but first of all, you have to invite them. Somebody invited you. If you would never have met a devotee anywhere, how would you know? So in this way, we are part of Lord Chaitanya's movement. And this night, night dancing of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Srivas Anga. This has been enacted day and night around the world by the, 
devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's all they do, that's all they need. Give Krishna and Prabhupada and dance to the Medanga beat. That's the Prabhupada step. And worship Radharani, the supreme of all the supremes. So much that even Krishna would join in her kirtan. That's what Mahaprabhu is. Mahaprabhu is Krishna joining in the Radharani worship of him, the feeling she feels, all the secrets of the appearance of Mahaprabhu. So this is a little bit of what our spiritual teachers have given to us. This, this appreciation of Goloka Vendava. You want Goloka Vendava, Goloka Vendava wants you. You are welcome in the world of love. You are not welcomed in the world of hate. You are not really welcomed in the world of the machos. Why not? Because everybody wants to be a bigger macho. So if you are a good competition for them, they don't want you there. That's why in the macho world they kill each other. What? You're more rich than me? I steal from you. What? You're more beautiful than me? I'll kill you. Mirror and mirror on the wall. Who's the most beautiful of all? Get rid of her. That's the macho world. So you're not welcome in the macho world. The other machos are already busy of, of sharing the goodies amongst themselves. No, you can go to the macho world if you want to be the slave of some macho. Okay, you want to be my slave? Then you are welcome. Come here. But if you say, no, I'm not a slave of you. I'm a shareholder here. I'm part of the competition. Then you're not welcome. But in the world of love in Goloka Vendavan, you are welcome. Each and every one of you is welcome. And the macho world means everybody wants to enjoy more than the other. So in order to enjoy in this world, what do you do? Well, you try to find out what this world has to offer for enjoyment. Any idea? Any idea what this world has to offer for enjoyment? Let's think about it. Anything really special? Sex life. Is that so special, sex life? Highest pleasure in this material world, available to pigeons, scorpions. Scorpions. I just read a book called Nature's IQ. Interesting book, very recommendable. Everybody in this world is enjoying some kind of sex life. Little rats also. Little rats have, have sex life and then have many little ratties. <laughs> Sit down, please. Don't disturb them. Sit down. No, don't do this. Frogs. Frogs have 2,000 children every batch. I mean, who are you with your two kids? Huh? 
two or three kids. That is, how can you compare to you to a frog? So we should install the deity of Mr. Frog on the pedestal of fertility. Mr. Frog, 2,000 kids a year. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Who are we, Dina Banu? Nothing. Huh? Cannot compare with Mr. Frog. And he's just a frog, you know. I mean, if you look at the frogs, they're pretty amazing, you know. They have many special features, but poison frogs, spitting frogs. And some frogs, you touch them, you die. And there's other frogs. Like one time I went to Bhutan Thai in Sao, Sao Paulo to the snake museum. I wanted to know how many types of snakes are there. I was curious. And they had this frog there. It was this size. <laughs> Poor guy in a, locked in a cage. But when I looked at his face, I saw Jean-Paul Sartre. <laughs> I mean, it may have been just my mental concoction, you know. But I saw the face of Jean-Paul Sartre in this frog. <laughs> I mean, many people look alike, no? It doesn't necessarily have been him, no? But, <laughs> can you imagine frogs like this? Or like in, 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 in Hawaii, we have the cookies. The cookies are frogs, they're so small. Teeny little frogs. But as soon as the light goes down, the whole forest is one. Kiki, 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 kiki. Kiki, 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 kiki. Billions. Everybody says, I want to get rid of all the cookies. Because they make so much noise. So that's the tropical pleasure of night. Don't need a sound system there. <laughs> The cookies take care of the song. <laughs> so, the world of frogs, yes, they, they all have sex. So what this world has to offer to you? Getting drunk on, on wines which are 200 years old. I mean, I never drank that stuff, so... I mean, I couldn't even afford a simple, a simple, whatsoever. But there's people, they pay, who knows about wines, how expensive they get? How much you pay for a bottle of this old stuff? You can pay 500,000, 100,000, more, 700,000? 700,000 were there. There exist wines for 700,000. A bottle of wine, 700,000. Yes, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That's a bottle of wine for 700,000 dollars. That's amazing, no? You can actually drink a 700,000 dollar bottle. Is that true? Yes, yes. They should all go to jail, shouldn't they? <laughs> this whole society should be in jail. What are they promoting? What are they offering to the people? And then there's a poor guy like Russell Boy. <laughs> he could have worked for many years and in many lifetimes he couldn't have bought one of those bottles. He could never have ever drunk a $700,000 bottle, sorry, euros. Even with all the money his father left for him, nothing. No wine for you. You got to just drink water. And that you got to buy from Nestle. 
<laughs> yes, no free want, nothing. So what is this world? What do they offer us? What madness they have us run after, giving up Krishna Kirtan and giving up Harinama Sankirtan of Lord Gauranga. I didn't know the wine was so costly. So they don't have heroin that expensive. They, they, they also sell special heroines. I don't think in those drugs you don't have those. They sell white. Huh? They sell white, pure heroin, which is also, but it's not like this. It's just by the purity degree. That's, by the purity. They don't have some That's very nice. They call it purity. The more pure it is, the more impure it is. Huh? The more dangerous. So like that. What else? Come on, help me, help me. What's this material? Oh, I found something good for you. They just made. Who was that? I just read it in the paper. Uh, some car company. I I I forgot the name. Maybe a Lamborghini or something. They just made one new car. Three and a half billion euros. No, million, million, sorry. Three and a half million euros. So, I mean, for somebody who likes to drive a bit faster. Huh? So, this is the type of thing they, to drive the people in this world mad, they are promoting items like this. The Van Gogh painting, which sold for fifty-six million dollars, it's all hoax. It's just just cheating, everybody. Any painter can paint as good as Van Gogh. I mean, I like Van Gogh, you know. Nice way of painting with this little little. Stuff, but any painter can copy that and, and make you another painting. Why should somebody pay 56? It's just a world of investment. It's just a cheat and keep the illusion going. Tell me what the material world has to offer to you. Why you want to stay in this material world? You want it to be flown in a helicopter somewhere, huh? That's a nice way of traveling, no? Having the motor right. Who of you has flown in a helicopter? Anybody? Is that a nice flight? <laughs> Not much noise over your head? Huh? Of course. A lot of noise. Is it as nice as flying in a normal airplane? Different. <laughs> but you can hardly speak to each other, no? Can you speak to the other person? It's just crazy. Now you have helicopter service for service from Vrindavan to Delhi. <coughs> they just started heli helicopter service for the rich. Hmm, the mad world. Hmm? Anybody else has something to offer which I forgot, which is so amazing, which would make it worthwhile to, to give up Krishna consciousness and enjoy this material world? Something. Yes, Prabhupada, you have something to offer? Or she says that you can become the most beautiful if you get a nice surgery done on your body. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Maybe they can fix you up, Ambarish. <laughs> maybe, maybe they can make you look like 20 again. <laughs> Oh Krishna. No, no, this, this this is plastic surgery is another subject you really can drive you crazy, you know. What they do, they've made an industry out of it. 
that you should not accept the body you have. Come on, fix it up. Get a body, your personal style. Come on, really, let's style yourself. What you need, or your butt is so small. Come on, we get your silicone butt. Huh? Like this. Whoa. I mean, I was afraid of even a needle. Huh? Anybody poking a needle into my body, I was never really happy about that. You know, sometimes you get avoided. No, doctor, doctors love needles. No, but somebody cutting my body to put plastic fill inside. Oh, they have this other thing you inject it in the face. What do you call it? Botox. Huh? Botox. 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 Nice name comes from Botox. <laughs> huh? People actually do that. They actually inject plastic into their face. And how mad you have to become. How crazy you have to go. Somebody, somebody looks at you. Oh, look at all my wrinkles. Oh, poor guy, wrinkles. Come on, we get you some buttocks. <laughs> huh? But this is really ugly, by the way. You can see it at once. I've never yeah. seen that. I don't have no eyes for that. Or I never met anybody who puts it. Maybe. Yes, Prema, you have another proposal of enjoyment. No, it was just about Botox. The people you, you cannot recognize, or you recognize because they don't have, it's like um, the, the face is a little like, um, like a mask. Gelähmt. Zombie. No. <laughs> it looks like a zombie. It's, it's like you Paralyzed. cannot express, Paralyzed. Just have so much facial expression. As, as you would have the face, you cannot smile. Yeah. No, you cannot yes. smile, you cannot cry. You have a plastic face. Who else? You had another proposal. Yeah, with uh, Mr. Putin, you can go and have a mammoth steak. Because uh, they found a mammoth years ago somewhere in the frozen. Uh, Alaska and uh, they dig it out and they keep it frozen for special occasions uh, you can have a mammoth dinner. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Ten thousand years ago. Yes, really, he really now Amberish really he really hit the jack the jack. <laughs> Uh, a 35 million year old mammoth steak dinner with Mr. Putin. Yeah, for that, I'll give up Krishna consciousness. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is... You think he'll invite me? <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Yes? <laughs> that's uh, that's that's gross. That's gross fantasy. Thank you, Amrish. You give me new hope. <laughs> okay, who else has something very sweet to offer for the material world that we stay here? You can buy a land on the moon. Certificate. You can already buy? Yes. Yeah. In Germany? I don't know in Germany, but you can buy it. Yeah. Well, that would be pretty audacious, because how can they sell the land on the moon? The Germans <laughs> never went there. The Americans never went there either, but they say they went, so at least they can sell something. Huh? The sun is sold already. The sun? is sold, yes, to a Spanish woman. Wow. Yeah, the sun has already been sold officially. <laughs> so, I could own the sun, you mean to say? 
Why not? I can buy it from the guy who bought it. So everybody who gets solar energy has to pay the guy something? <laughs> I'm not, I think it, she was like a queen. A clever lawyer. She was like the que queen or some like, something like a princess. I'm not sure if it's Spanish or in Monaco or something like this. And maybe in Monaco something. Who bought the sun? He, he bought it for his wife or something. <coughs> some very aristocrat. And I have also one another. Okay, that's another one. Yes. Um, <laughs> For example, in, in some Asian countries, like uh, big hotel chains like Sheraton Hilton, they offer you camping. This is more or less just a tent in the forest, and you have to pay 1,500 euro per night for example. Yeah, that's the Bedouin style <laughs> of stay, stay like a Bedouin prince. Just put it ten. I stay just like a Bedouin prince in Kumbamela for six weeks. <laughs> huh? I know what it's like. Any other offer was there? S keep us in the material world, some special offers. Space trips. Well, everybody's making spaced out trips. <laughs> Space trips for one million dollars. You can, you can buy, you can... You, can, you actually can go. You can go, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I read about that. See the earth from above. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have brought us here together to celebrate your sweet and humble, simple living, high thinking. I stay with you, I vote for you, because you have given the most wonderful thing which anybody could ever get, which is Sadhu Sangha, Hari Kirtan, Braj, living in Braj, Listening Srimad Bhagavatam, Harikata, and last but not least, not to forget, take Prashad. <laughs> and this is the Mahotsav today, so I think it's time to celebrate something real of the higher taste. Hey, <laughs> Even though eating the steak with Mr. Putin would not be sinful because at least you didn't kill the mammoth, no? <laughs> huh? So it wouldn't be as bad as all the others eating chicken, no? Uh, come from the, from the, from the chain, chain slaughterhouse of, of the chicken concentration camp. Thank you very much for all your moral support. I needed that. I was really down. But hearing all these these choice options of the material world, I definitely reconfirm that it's better to stay with just a few wonderful people who want to serve God and to stay with all those who don't want to serve God. Let's go for the quality and not for the quantity. The Vox Populi is definitely a, a big illusion, a big lie.